Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today. For this one, we have a very, very special review. This is going to be beer review number 2000. And uh, it also marks six and a half years since I started the channel. I believe the exact date that the first video went live was the 31st of July 2013. So, you know, over the last six and a half years, it's been crazy how much this channel has grown, I think. In the grand scheme of YouTube, it's still very small, but I wouldn't change it for the world. I mean, I started filming and beer videos just to kind of catalogue all the different beers that I was tasting, because at that point in time, Brewdog were firing out new beers left, right and centre, and I was just kind of like, how are you ever going to remember what all of these things taste like? And then the idea came to do beer videos. At the time, I thought it was quite, you know, unique, and uh, it turned out it wasn't. But um, you know, it's been it's been a great journey. I mean, I've made some really good friends um, in the beer tubing community over the last few years. The guys in England, now the guys in the Netherlands who've popped up in the last year or two. Um, out in Japan, Casey and Eric, and now Nevit, who's started up doing these videos. There's the guys over in America as well, Paul and uh, Matt and things like that. You know, it's a lovely little community that we have. And then there's you guys, the subscribers, who are. are incredible you know you guys give me a hell of a lot of information about beer i learn a hell of a lot from you guys some of you have sent me your home brews some of you have sent me beer from random places in the world as well which has just been awesome so from the bottom of my heart a huge thank you i mean to me this is a hobby it's something that i enjoy doing for fun and you know if that can bring a bit of happiness to, to other people as well um it's it's awesome you know it's, it's just that's all it is it's just a little bit of a hobby to me i enjoy doing this just as a kind of way to relax and it's nice to you know be learning something all the time that's just very much my mentality by trade a chemist and physicist and um, programmer but you know it, i really enjoy my beer as well it's something that i got into in my uh, my days of studying chemistry back in Aberdeen and it's just snowballed since then. Just imagine if I put my time into something uh, not quite as damaging to the liver, you know, but it's, it's great, I love it and as I say a huge thank you to you guys who have, you know, supported the channel over the last six and a half years. It's, it's awesome, it really is awesome. I'm looking forward to my next thousand beer reviews and we'll be close to the ten year anniversary of the channel by then, I'm sure actually. So um, yeah, we've got a very special beer for this video then. For this one we are going to return to Belgium. And we're visiting a brewery who are very, very highly regarded. I, if I'm not mistaken, this is the most expensive beer I've ever bought in Seestembolag here in Sweden. So for this one, we are going to go to Vlaanderen in Belgium, Oostvletteren to be precise. And we're trying my first ever beer from De Struise Brewers. So this one is the Dark Horse Reserva. And it is a dark sour ale coming in at 7% ABV. I'll tell you a little bit more exactly about it later in the video. Um, but I'm really curious to see how this one turns out. I think I paid like 200 kroners for this beer at the time that I bought it. So this one, as I say, I think is the most expensive beer I've ever bought in Seestembo Lager. I actually can't remember when I bought it, but when I bought it, I said that's going to be beer review number 2000. I bought it just because it was a brewery that I... Hadn't, uh, hadn't heard of before but then I read about it and um, I thought you know that's one that needs to be saved. I think this one was, was bought about you know about a year ago maybe a year and a half ago that I first got a hold of this one so it should be an awesome beer this brewery have a hell of a reputation and it's definitely cool to introduce these guys to you on the channel for the first time for such a special review so here's hoping it's a good beer thank you for all your support over the last six and a half years and I really hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well let's see how we get on with this beer then the Dark Horse Reserva at 7% ABV from the Struza Brewers in Belgium. So um, yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from the Struza Brewers. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, as I mentioned. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the 
playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Belgian beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about the Struze, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So the Struze Brewers are based in Oostvleteren in Vlaanderen in Belgium and they were founded back in 2001 and the four men behind the company in the beginning were Carlo Grutiert, Peter Brem, Philippe Desens and Urban Cateau. So Urban and Felipe apparently owned an ostrich farm and this also had accommodation for guests and things too but they said that they wanted to develop beers that were distinctive to their region in Belgium and so they started to collaborate with Carlo who was a local winemaker. Eventually in 2003 they, this became its own kind of commercial interest if you like. They officially founded the brewery and they started brewing beers at the Cavier Brewery in Northern Hainaut but then they continued there until 2006 and then they moved their brewing to the Dacre brewery in Wollstone Vletren and in 2014 they started brewing beers at their own brewery which is known as Het Oud Schulte if I'm pronouncing that correctly basically the little old school in Oost and over the years this brewery have become very very decorated. They're known for their stronger beers and their barrel aged beers as well. Apparently in 2008 these guys were named the world's best brewery uh, by Rate Beer, the kind of peer reviewing site that you guys that are watching this channel I'm sure all know and they also have their own tasting room on site there as well and according to Untapped these days they've produced around 170 different types of beer and you know some of the ones if you go on their website and have a look at some of these they're very very interesting actually I really hope that I can review more from these guys at some point in the future and um, the name of the brewery the Struze, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, Struze apparently is an ancient Flemish word for ostrich and so they also have ostriches on some of their labels which is a trait they share of course with Brauerei Tea from the Netherlands if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but apparently this is a very old word that means, uh, it's a slang word as well, an old slang word that means tough, like strong and things too. And that was one of the main reasons that they decided to uh, to choose that for the name of their brewery. But yeah, a, a really well respected brewery this one. One that I've heard a lot about but one that's also proved a little bit elusive to me and as I say when I saw this one it just kind of piqued my interest and that was at one of the points where I was saying to you that I really needed to review more Belgian beer on the channel and um, that was one of the other reasons why I picked up this one so I think it's quite fitting that for beer review number 2000 we do a Belgian beer, one of the great beer countries of the world and one of the newer generation of brewers of course um, you know, the, law, the, the new generation of microbreweries started up in the late 80s if I remember correctly in Belgium so um, it's awesome, there's a great selection of, of beer down there I think they must have about four or five hundred different breweries in that country these days but um, yeah, an awesome place, somewhere that I really need to go back to and do a little bit of beer tourism so that's something that is definitely um, on the cards for the future. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about the Struza Brewers for the moment. A brewery that seems to be very, very interesting. They've got a lot of plaudits and things quite rightly. And um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one. My first ever taste of one of their beers. I'll let you have a little look at the artwork of this one then before we open up and get on to the tasting. There you can see the dark horse just kind of chilling around there. Looks very nice. A plain bottle cap on this one. The glass on this bottle incidentally is green. I'm not sure why they've used green glass instead of, um, of brown glass, uh, grass, right? The brown glass, right enough. Um, but it says on the side here, this ale was brewed, bottled and capped by hand. Contains a hybrid dark sour ale, somewhere between a dirty horse and uh, an Earth Monk, which is two of their other dark sour beers that they have, spontaneously fermented and aged for four years on some of the finest red wine barrels from the Bordeaux area in France. So um, yeah, it looks very, very nice. There you can see on the label there, if I remember correctly, that little shield that you see there at the top above the pregnant woman, that is the... Um, that is the symbol for the town of Oostvleteren, which is, is pretty cool actually. But it says on the side here this one was bottled on the 6th of February 2018. And I've got a feeling I bought this one, you know, um, when would I have bought this? I think I bought this, you know, in, in like maybe 
October of 2019 or something like that. It might have been, in fact, no, not October 2019, October 2018, my apologies. I bought it around then, so I have had this beer for about a year and a half. So it should have aged a little bit and kind of mellowed out quite nicely, but it's 750 millilitres. Um, I don't know what that is in crazy American measurements, so don't even ask me. Um, but yeah, it should be really nice, this. So without further ado, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm very, very curious to see what this beer is like. Oh, there we go, this one's going to be a bit difficult to get open. But there we go. i tell you something, it smells lovely when you open it up. I've not had too many wine barrel aged beers, maybe only around 20 or so at most from uh, different breweries. I think the last one I had maybe was from Denmark, to be honest with you. I've really not had all that many wine barrel um, aged beers, and probably the closest ones to me here in uh, in South Sweden would either be Mikkel or Baghaven, or you know, probably um, Breakagate uh, up in Landskrona. They have uh, some, I think they do some wine barrel aging and stuff like that as well. But um, yes, I've not had too many wine barrel aged beers. But um, yeah, this one comes in at 7% ABV, so we'll just need to see how this one goes. I'm really not sure what to expect from this one, and that is kind of what makes it a special review video as well. So um, yeah, as you can see with this beer, it's poured a lovely... If I put the light through this, it's actually a very dark kind of um, ruby coloured beer, this one. I'm wondering if this one will be a little bit akin to you know, like a Flanders Red or uh, or something like this, because it certainly looks roughly around the same colour. I mean, Rodenbach, of course, have quickly become a, a favourite Belgian brewery of mine. You know, the Alexander's one that I still need to uh, to try. Um, but this beer, it looks absolutely awesome. I mean, you can see there's about a quarter finger of a frothy, I would say sort of fawn, very light beige coloured head on this one. That's fading away, of course, to be a very, very thin foamy layer. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, but you can see a kind of steady stream of very small bubbles going up towards um, the bottom of that kind of head there. But I mean, overall, this looks really very, very nice. The colour, I would say, if you shine the light through it, it's a very sort of dark ruby colour, but to you guys on the camera, it will appear like a sort of dark chestnutty mahogany, but yeah, shine the light through it. And it's a beautiful ruby colour. I'm not sure how well that will show up on the camera. I think you can see just down in that little corner there, you can see that little kind of ruby edge to the uh, to the beer, which is, is absolutely lovely. So, um, yeah, let's have a look at the aroma then and just see how we get on. I'm really curious about this. Oh, yeah. Um, there are elements in there that are almost like a Flemish red, to be honest with you. I mean... Straight away you're going to notice that Venus character right enough. And I mean, you can smell the lovely oaky components in there as well, and the little bit of vanilla and things that go with that. And obviously the tartness of those um, kind of black or red grapes, you know, it's um, it's a lovely, lovely smelling beer, this. Um, there is a little bit of a kind of toastiness to it. Um, it's almost got a little bit of a kind of earthy kind of thing going on too, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, the aroma of this beer, it's really interesting, it's actually, um, it's, it's really quite dark, I mean, that's not like any other beer that I've come across on the channel before, this is, this is quite special, I mean, now that I'm smelling it, I'm very glad that this is one that I picked. Um, yeah, so as I say, definitely that kind of oaky, woody note is forming the backbone of the beer. Um, <clears throat> there's also that kind of, there is a little bit of vanilla coming out of this one I think then you've got that tartness from the grapes but you've also got things like um, you know, you've got like juicy berries and stuff, it's got a little bit of an almost kind of blackberry note to it, it's got a little bit of that kind of almost cherry-ish sharpness which is interesting, there's the, the, the red grapes or black grapes or whatever um, from the, from the red winey notes, you know, you really get that kind of tartness out of this, which is lovely. And I mean, when it's spontaneously fermented as well, a lot of that is going to be attributed to the yeast. It's not all about the, the barrel aging right enough. Um, but yeah, you've got those cherryish notes like red currants, black currants, things like that. It's not quite sharp enough to be like raspberry or anything like that, to be honest with you. 
but the fruity notes that come out of this are really, really interesting. Um, maybe a little bit, not, I don't know if it's figgy, it's maybe like more kind of plums and dates and stuff like that that's coming out of this one. Um, but it's got a lovely sharpness to it, I have to say. Um, you can pick up wee hints of like slightly grassy notes and um, you know the little bit of earthiness that I was talking about there, that'll be from the hops but I mean usually when it comes to sour beers um, I've heard that they use older hops, I think it was actually even someone commenting on one of the videos that told me that, that in a lot of Belgian beers they'll use, in sour beers like this, they'll use older hops so that it doesn't kind of overpower the um, the sort of flavour of the beer and um, you know it makes sense that in, in two ways that sort of makes sense because when this one's been aged for four years you're going to get very very little hoppy character out of it and that's the case with this it's just really remnants of earthiness and grassiness that you can pick up but at the same time you know for the actual style of beer if this one hadn't been aged so long you'd probably get something similar but just a little bit more potent I would guess um, there's, I think there's wee elements of brown sugar in here as well, like a very light, wispy, slight caramelly note. Maybe even a little touch of a biscuit or something really, but for me, it's all about the fruitiness. And um, it's really all about the fruitiness, definitely, and the kind of woody um, notes that you get out of this, and some of that kind of tart character as well. It's just a beautiful smelling beer, this one, um, so I'm really curious to see how this, uh, how this one turns out. So as I always say with these beers, take a little bit of time and uh, enjoy the aroma before you get stuck into them. But let's have a taste of this one then, beer number 2000. Um, the Dark Horse Reserva at 7% EBV from the Struise Brewers in Oostvletren in Vlaanderen in uh, Belgium. Awesome, awesome beer this one, I think it's going to be. So um, yeah, thank you to all you guys for your support over the last six years. Um, let's get stuck into this one. Slange, skull, Bruce, salty. That's an awesome beer. Um, it's quite sort of sharp in the beginning, but you know that's. Once your mouth adjusts to it, I always find with these sour beers, you have to take a few sips of them and just let your mouth adjust before you can appreciate them fully. And, you know, this is definitely going to be one of those. Yeah. It's, um... It really is very, very nice, that. Um... These big, I think I really need to, um, you know, these 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 fodder aged beers, and you know the 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 big heavy sours that you get from Belgium. It's something I really need to explore these a little bit more. Sour beers, I've really developed an appreciation for them because of uh, you know break it that we have here in in Skåne in the south of Sweden, and it's they kind of got me into it. And then it's kind of expanded into things like this. But I mean, on the basis of this beer, I can really see why this brewery are, are so highly regarded. I mean, for me, when I tried Rodenbach, um, it was just, um, it, it, it was really just like a, a kind of an epiphany almost. I had, the, you know, the first Flanders Red Ale, and it was just, it was awesome. Um, and, you know, this, trying beers like this now, I just absolutely love them. It's just a shame they're so expensive when you're not actually in Belgium, but um, you know, for a treat they are worth it, definitely, 100%. Mm. But if this is what Brauerei de Struze are, um, are doing, then um, you know, hats off to them. This is awesome. Let's try and break the flavour of this beer down a little bit then. So, Straight away with this one, you can really just feel that lovely oaky kind of woody quality. That's really what forms the linchpin of this beer for me. And um, there's definitely a little bit of a there's definitely a little bit of a kind of um, almost earthiness to the wood. It's almost um, I mean I know it's not, but it's got the same kind of vibe as kind of peatiness almost. But it's, you know this beer is not smoking. It's like that's a stupid word to use to be honest, but it's just got a little bit of darkness to the wood, to be honest. Um, it's almost as if it's very, very slightly charred or something like that. You can really pick that up. And I know when they barrel age stuff, usually you charge, uh, you 
char, sorry, the inside of the barrels. But you do get a little bit of that. Um, it gives a bit of dryness to the beer the further you go into the aftertaste. But yeah, when you come further forward on the tongue with this one, you can definitely pick out little bits of... Um, you can really pick out little bits of kind of vanilla flavour there and it comes out more the further you go into the aftertaste. There's almost little bits of kind of like butterscotchy, like Werther's Original type flavours in this beer as well. You can you go to the very centre of your palate and you will pick out a little bit of that kind of sweet caramelly note and that would be covering up the boozy side of the beer but I mean maybe there is a little bit of caramel or something here. There really are some nice kind of brown sugary elements to this beer. Uh, but then as you move further out from it, it becomes more like butterscotchy, Werther's Original type flavours as well. The sort of red winey notes, you can feel those just underneath at the, the front of the palate too. Um, you've got a really lovely, um, you can really feel those grapey, vinousy notes coming out of this. I mean, I could send... I could easily polish off this beer myself, but you know, it's a special occasion, I'm going to share it. But this, this is crazy, this beer. This is just awesome. I mean, it's like a bit. It's like a bottle of wine. This really isn't it. You just sip on it and enjoy it. But yeah, it's um, it's uh, this is one of these beers. It really you can feel it just evolving on the palate. The more you uh, the more you drink of it. Um, I mean the sides of the palate are quite simple. I mean the sort of where you would normally get the hops and things. I mean, in the back corners of the palate, you do get a little bit of um, of earthiness out of it. You can feel the woody characters just getting slightly darker towards the back of the palate. And as you come further forward along the side of the tongue, there's definitely a little bit of a kind of herbally quality there. You'll maybe detect tiny, tiny remnants of like floral notes at the front corners of the palate and round the front curve of the tongue. There is just a very slight, very, very, very slight kind of grassy thing in there. And I mean, that goes into what I was saying earlier, older hops. And I mean, it's aged for four years. The vast majority, probably like 95% at least of that hoppy character will drop out of the beer. But you can, I always think you can get little bits of, um, of hoppy notes out of the, these beers, even when they are aged to, uh, to this degree. Definitely. And I mean, compared to, um, I think with sour beers, personally, I don't find these the most um, complex of beer styles. Um, I mean, they're beautiful, they're beautiful, beautiful beers, and it's all, I think, in the craftsmanship. For me, big sour beers and big barrel aged sour beers like this, it's all about how smooth you can get the flavours. It's not necessarily about how kind of complex and things um, they're going to be. It's all about how these flavours fit together. And when you get things like Rodenbach and things like this, the Streuze, um, you know, it's... Um, it's it's beautiful. It is all about the craftsmanship. It's not about how complex the beer is. And I mean, this one, the way these flavours go together is really, really nice. I mean, the woody notes you get and then the brown sugars, the sort of Werther's Original type notes on top of that. And the smoothness of that kind of hoppy edge of your tongue. It all just fits together absolutely beautifully. And we've not even talked about the fruity side of this beer yet. And there is a fair little bit of things going on in there. But this is, you know, make no mistake, as I say, this is a beautiful beer. But when you pay 200 kroners for a beer, which is, that must be about 220 uh, euros, something like that, about 17 British pounds or something. What would that be in dollars? You know, it'd be about 20... What would it be? Maybe 22, 23 US dollars, something like that. You know, when you pay that for a beer like this, um, you expect it to be good, but some you, you do still get surprises like that. It's not about the money, of course, it's about enjoying it. Who cares about money? Mm. But yeah, this beer is just, um, it's just awesome. Just need to see that. Um, let's talk about the fruity side of things then. So behind the front curve of the palate, that's where all these kind of fruity characteristics come out of this beer. And uh, for me, this one's really interesting. This is where the beer does have a good little bit of complexity in my mind. You can definitely get that nice red, winey, um, vinous, grapey quality to the beer. 
and I think it gets a bit drier the further you go into the uh, into the aftertaste as well and um, the the sort of sour part of the beer but it's not sour in the kind of tart sense and or it's, it's not pucker at all it's just a, a nice level of sourness actually um, but yeah that lovely tart grapey note that's in there is is really spot on for me when you move further forward from that you get a little bit of a there's a little bit of, I think there's a wee touch of a kind of plummy note to this one but then very quickly it starts to become more like dry it's more like dried fruits that you get out of this like kind of um, there, to me there's a good little bit of a kind of sultana like flavour in here maybe even a little bit of is it maybe apricot I don't know um, yeah I mean the further you go into the aftertaste with this you get a more of a kind of sort of red berry-ish um, kind of note um, but really for me the fruitiness in this one is quite like dried fruits it, it's sultanas that I think you get out of this one first and foremost there maybe is a wee bit of a juicy plum towards the back of that front of your palate then as you move further forward from that um, it gets a little bit more kind of like the, the sultana sort of flavours and then on the edge of your tongue there's a wee bit of a kind of red berry-ish, blackberry kind of note there. It's almost a little bit tart on the edge of the tongue but at the very back between the kind of um, sort of vanilla woody type part of the beer and the fruits you've got that where the kind of sour tart notes there so the, the main part of your tongue, the back of the tongue is the woody notes, the brown sugars and all of this then you've got the tartness and then in front of that you've got the more juicy elements of the, the fruity side of the beer. So it's really just interesting as I say how these elements of the beer, they just, it's just interesting how everything kind of fits together. I really really like that about this one. So you know, thumbs up to uh, to to the Stoise Brawlers for this. They've done um, they've done an awesome job. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, Destroyza Brawlers, I think it was. Pardon me, um, but as I say, it's it's by no means the most complex beer you're going to come across. But the way everything fits together, it's you know it's like mastercraft. It's just it's it's really good. I mean, if you like the thing that I would compare this to in terms of craftsmanship would be Rodenbach. Um, it reminds it's got the same vibe as a lot of the Rodenbach beers, but it's you know it's, it's a completely different flavour profile. Basically, I think that's a very good way to kind of sum this one up. So definitely a little bit more sweeter and brown sugary and um, lovely smooth woody notes. A little bit of dryness as I say when you go further into the, the palate as well and a little bit more kind of complexity and uh, and dryness to the fruit as well which I think is really interesting. But a beautiful beer nonetheless and definitely a, a big treat for Beer Review 2000. Um, Mouthfeel then. Um, What we say about this? Um, I always find sour beers to be a bit lighter than other styles, but I mean, I think within the sour beer category, this one it, it come it strikes me as being pretty um, pretty full bodied. The carbonation is very very smooth. It also feels like quite an oily beer. In terms of IBUs and bitterness and stuff, I think you'd be lucky to get ten IBUs out of out of this one. To be honest with you, the tartness out of this beer, you get a little bit of it in the beginning. It has a little bit of an impact, but once the beer mellows out, it really is very very smooth. In the middle of your palate, you've got a good degree of smoothness and also sweetness in there. Some lovely juicy fruity notes, and I mean, as I say, just overall, it's a beautiful beautiful beer. It's great how just everything sort of uh, fits together in this. That's what makes a good sour beer for me. It's all about how these flavours. And blend together, and I mean, when I, I can see why this brewery is very, very, um, very, very hyped, basically, and it makes me trying this one makes me very curious about some of their other beers. So hopefully, I can get a hold of some of those. I could see if I had more, um, if I was, if it was easier for me to access these beers, I guess I could see these guys becoming a firm favourite, like uh, like Rodenbach, for example. But um, yeah, beautiful beer this, and I'm really glad that I was able to review this one for you. Definitely a treat for beer review number 2000. So let's leave it at that for this one. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favorite beers are. 
from the Strays of Rovers, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and uh, hopefully I can review more from these guys at some point soon. Make sure you check out my social media, and I really hope that you've enjoyed the last 2,000 reviews, and I hope you look forward to the next 1,000 or so, or, well, there'll be more than that, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, thank you again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. This was the Dark Horse Reserva, a really interesting and very unique beer, coming in at 7% ABV from the Strays of Rovers in um, Oostvleteren in Flanderen in Belgium. Awesome beer and a great way to celebrate 2000 beer reviews. Till the next time, Slange Snow and I'll catch you guys soon. Proust, Santé, Slange, Skull.